after leaving PSG, I really, really thought a job would come up in Spain. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited. I even waited a little bit longer. But no. Spain is off limits this season. Now, do I have a year off? Or do I go somewhere and try and win a competition I've not been in yet? The Europa League. And that's exactly what I did. In the middle of August, I applied for the Tottenham Hotspur job. They won the FA Cup last season, beating Man City in the final. So they are in the Europa League. That is right. I know in my last episode, I did say I wouldn't go back to England, but it had to be done. It was the only job available, really. I was offered the Liverpool job. And I said no straight away to that one. I wasn't interested in the Champions League. Yes, they gave me a better chance of winning the FA Cup. Spurs are in the Europa League and they won the FA Cup last year. I literally joined 14 days ago and we're just at the beginning of September. So the league has already started. Miguel left after five and a half years, resigned. He is now the Spain manager. A World Cup has just happened. And you would like to think that a few managers would be swapping and changing. No. Nothing in Spain whatsoever for two and a half months. So we are back in England. We are Spurs manager. Now, I'm not expecting to win the league this year. My main aim this season is the FA Cup and Europa League. Nothing else matters. League doesn't matter. Obviously, we've got to do well. Otherwise, we might get sacked. So in the brief time that I have been here, I have made some signings because a few players have left all before I turned up. Some of the main players have actually gone. Christian Romero has left. He's gone to PSG. I know he went to PSG because I signed him in January as a free transfer. Let's just say there wasn't much forward planning when I'm taking the Spurs job because I did literally rinse the defence and we haven't got a defence basically. But I have spent some money. Well, the first signings I did make because we haven't actually got a out and out striker was Bruno Alves. For a fee of 37 and a half million. He's a decent striker. He's 21 year old, Portuguese. He'd do well. Get to score a goal, yeah. But 37 and a half million from Gazeras in Portugal. Also bought an Englishman, Yamal York from Fulham. For a fee of 49 million. Hasn't played yet. He is more of, I'd say more of a winger than a striker. Great potential. Apparently he's, he's a decent championship player at the moment. A good Premier League player in the future. Give him game time, he will score. He says they're a striker. I don't think he's a striker. I'll see him more as a winger. Next up, we bought Ebo Mensa from Everton for a fee of 66 million. Decent all rounder. Could improve dr drastically with game time. We do have Kuliszewski still here. He is 30 years old, so this is the next generation of them. And of course, we raided Man City. We bought an Alachuro defender. Hasn't really hit it off at Man City in all fairness hasn't hit it off at Barcelona either when he was on loan at Barcelona but there is bags of potential here he's only 21 years old I think game time is what he needs and I've, you will get it here because we haven't got a very big squad for depth and the last one for 108 million from Eintracht Frankfurt is a goalkeeper Florian Diaz the 24 year old Argentinian he's alright he's not too bad but I overspent massively here massive over 100 million on a goalkeeper who's all right he's not world class all because i panicked and vicario wanted to leave i literally pressed ballot buttons i'm like i haven't got another goalkeeper i need another decent goalkeeper through 273 million spent minus 12 million so let's we'll say 260 just rammed it up nicely tactic wise we are still using the same 4-3-3 formation that we've used in all the teams so far and if i pick Best 11 without restrictions. This is what it comes up with. It does say Vicaria goes in goal, but I would probably put Diaz in there after spending all that money on him. Pedro Poro, Mickey van der Ben with Chura in defence. Vulcan Omen is a 21 year old Turkish defender. Wanted by Burnley of all teams. He's alright, he's not bad. I think a lot of the game time he will get this season will make him a better left back. Jord Elunga, a 22-year-old central midfielder, bought from Lons a couple of seasons, about 28.5 million. He is now valued at nearly 100 million. Very good player and still got potential, I do believe. Martin Batunia in central midfield, 27-year-old Croatian, bought from RB Leipzig before I was there. 
for 52 million. Was it Aston Villa, Diamond? Been around the block, still a decent player. Ismail Sabari, a 29 year old Moroccan, bought from PSV a couple of years ago for 57 million. It's fair to say we've not been shy of spending money on Tottenham. Dejan Kulizewski is still here, valued over 100 million, 30 years old. He is wanted by Al Hilal, and he has been here a few seasons now. So, yeah, still a very decent player. Now, up front, this is where I don't like what they put the best 11 for. Brendan Johnson's there, and he's not very good, in all fairness. He is wanted by Aston Villa. He's not been prolific in scoring. Seven goals, eight. He's not broken uh, double figures for ages. So I'm not convinced on him. And Jamie Donnelly, 25 old Northern Irish, wanted by Aston Villa. Aston Villa near striker by the sound of it. Don't know why. He's done better than Brendan Johnson, but I think I've got better players on the bench. The likes of Sid Reed. I think he looks outstanding for a striker. He just needs a game time. He's not really been playing. Saying that's 16-1. He's got one goal and three so far. Hearts was 15. Matt's playing for Millwall. And then you've got the man we just signed. Bruno Alvarez. Who I think will score a lot of goals. But actually got the likes of Mikey Moore. Madison's still here. We've got this young young Argentinian 20-year-old or Diego. He said in. Really good player, this one. Signed for 11 million before I got here. Value only 47 million. A really good central midfielder. Hopefully he can get some game time. Got Dennis Dogon as well. 22 year old right winger who looks great. Does need game time. So, schedule wise, I've only been here for two weeks. So, I've only played two games. The first game was a 2 0 win over Burnley. And the second game was a 2 all draw against Nottingham Forest. But, like I said, the competition in the league, we are sitting fifth, undefeated, eight points. We're not worried about the league. What we are worried about is the Europa League. And our fixtures have been announced. We have the likes of Roma, Shakhtar, Fiorentina, Servet, Ajax, Stuttgart, Valagrania, and Lyon. I'm not even sure what country they're from. Norway. With those fixtures, we should qualify into the next round. But there is some big teams. You've got Sporting, you've got obviously Roma, Leverkusen. Celtic are here as well. Monaco, Real Sociedad, Feyenoord. These are teams that are going to be tricky to play against. But I do fancy our chances. So, with all that said and done, let's simulate Season 8 and see what we can do with Spurs. Can we win an FA Cup? Can we get the Europa League trophy in the cabinet? We start in September with a 5 0 win against my former club, Roma. Bruno Alves in the 25th minute got a scoring underway before Diego Isidin in the 39th minute making it 2 0. Martin Batrinha in the 44th minute making it 3 0. And then two minutes into added time, Alvarez got his second. There's only one goal in the second half, and that was from Jamie Donnelly. Game finished 5 0, and it was a quite comfortable victory. We beat Chelsea 3-2 at Stamford Bridge before beating Shakhtar 2-0 in the second game of the group stage. Jamie Donnelly in 10 minutes got a score and underway before Bruno Alvarez got his third off the tournament so far in the 24th minute. And then the league was sitting top of the table, unbeaten. Still early days though. We beat West Ham 4-2 at the London Stadium before beating Fiorentina 4-1. Bruno Alvarez with a hat-trick. Fiorentina kicked off a score with, with Adil in the 15th minute, which only made Alvarez angry. He's got the equaliser in the 23rd minute, got his second in the 37th minute. Four minutes after half-time, he got his hat-trick. And then just to wrap up the scoring, in the 86th minute, Mickey van der Ven gone ahead of a corner to make it 4-1. We beat Manchester City with the Late Late Show in the EFL 4th round. Bruno Alves in the 47th minute. Got a score underway before Chris Hewitt in the 90 plus 4 minute got Manchester City's equaliser. But Ebu Amenso in the 90 plus 7th minute got us the winner and we progress into the next round of the EFL Cup. And we are still top of the league, unbeaten on 21 points. 
still definitely early days though. Things were going well in Europa League after beating Servette 7 2. Goals galore in this one. Ling with the first goal in the 12th minute before Edison in the 22nd minute got us an equalizer. Lunga got us 2 1 up in the 29th minute before Mickey van der Ven in the 32nd minute made it 3 1. Dennis Dogan in the 40th minute made it 4 1. And then Wesley Mufana in the 55th minute making it 5 1. And in the 66th minute, making it 6-1. So they did get a goal back in the 78th minute through Ling again. But this was an absolute whitewash. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure who scored our 7th goal. So I can't see the scoreline. A 2 all draw at Ellen Road against Leeds was followed by a 5-0 win over Ajax. Bruno Alvarez in the 19th minute. Man is on fire this season. What a signing he has been. For Sid Reid making it 2 0 just after the half time. Ebo Mensa got on the score sheet in the 75th minute. Before Bruno Alvarez got his second in the 77th minute. And then Brendan Johnson, hasn't played many games, got the last goal from the penalty spot in the 80th minute. And we are now sitting second in the league, a point behind Man City, but still unbeaten. December was tough. After coming away and with a 2 all draw, we then beat Stuttgart 2 0 in the Europa League. Two goals from Sid Reid. First goal in the seventh minute after a great touch and finish, and the second goal in the 39th minute gave us all three points. We then lost our first game of the season to Arsenal, of all teams. But we did get our revenge with a 3 1 win in the EFL Cup. Bruno Alvarez in the sixth minute, making it 1 0, before getting a second from the penalty spot in the 40th minute. Gabriel. Martielli got one back for Arsenal, but Bruno Alvarez got his hat-trick in the 71st minute. And then Man City just gave us a hiding, lost 3-1. But we gave Man City you know, a hiding, 4-0. And we are sitting in 5th place, 15 points now off Man City. What a weird month. We started off the new year with a 1-0 win over Leicester in the FA Cup 3rd round. Ismail Sabari in the 49th minute was enough to make us progress into the fourth round. Remember, we're looking to win this cup this year. Before Everton smashed us 5 0 in the first leg of the EFL semi final. We did get some revenge, winning 3 1. Still went out though. We did win 3 1 against Valerenga in the Europa League. Goal from Alvarez, of course, he's had a fantastic season so far in the third minute. Sid Reid made it 2 0 at half time in the 42nd minute. Before Joe Willick got our third in the 78th minute, they did get a, they did get a goal back through Ericsson in the 83rd minute. Kuliszewski was on fire in a 4 0 win over Nottingham Forest. Before beating Leon 6 1 in the final game of the group stage. And with that, we finished top of the league unbeaten round of 16 next. And in the league, we're still sitting fifth, 15 points still behind Manchester City. We started off well with a 3-0 win over Sunderland before beating West Ham 4-3 in a nail-biter. We also beat Leicester 2-0. But in the FA Cup fifth round, our rivals Arsenal beat us 2-0. Two Bakara Saka penalties in the 51st minute and 80th minute dented our hopes of winning the FA Cup this year. And we are still sitting in fifth place, but the points gap is shorter to everyone else around us. Back to Open League action and we won 3-2 in the round of 16, first leg against Hammerby. Jamie Donnelly getting himself a brace and a Joe Willock late winner. Means we take the advantage going into the second leg at home at the Hotspur Stadium. And in the second leg we smash Hammerby 9-0 to go through 12-2 on aggregate. There was enough goal scorers in this one. I'm just going to show you the goals because I can't see who I've scored. And in Premier League action, we beat Crystal Palace 3-1. In the league, we're up to fourth spot now. One point behind Arsenal. 
with seven games remaining. And in the quarterfinals of the Europa League, we had to face Stuttgart, win the first leg 2-1. Stuttgart got on the score in a Pavlis in the 12th minute, before Bruno Alvarez in the 15th minute got us an equaliser. Jamie Donnelly in the second half made it 2-1 and we take a slender lead going into the second leg. In between, we beat Fulham 4-1 at Craven Cottage. And in the second leg, we won 2-0, which means we progress into the semi-final. Wesley Bufano with a goal in the 53rd minute. And that man again, Jamie Donnelly, get a goal in the 70th minute. We also put a massive dent in Arsenal title hopes. And in the league, we're currently sitting second. Manchester City are champions by a long way, but we're above Arsenal. That's what matters. And in the semi-final first leg, we are away to Fiorentina, winning 3-1. Bruno Alves in the 23rd minute got a score and underway. Before Milovic got Fiorentina's equaliser in the 34th minute. But three minutes later, Kulizewski got us 2-1 up. And just before half-time, Dennis Dogan made it 3-1 and we take a good lead. We also lost 3-1 to the champions. Never mind. But in the second leg, we win 4-0 against Fiorentina. Ilunga in the 14th minute got a score and underway. Before he in the 18th minute and the 31st minute making it 3-0 at half time before Jamie Donnelly in the 52nd minute wrapped up the score and means we win 7-1 Lagra and we have a Europa Cup final and in the final league game of the season we beat Wolves 5-1 which means we finish in 4th spot overall Arsenal above us now oh, that's a shame but something big is coming that's right it is a Europa League final against Monaco. Can we win another trophy? In the 40th minute, Ilunga got onto the ball edge of the box as a shot and it goes in, it's 1-0. Three minutes later, Jamie Donnelly from the penalty spot makes it 2-0. And a great run from Pedro Paulo. She's a ball with a back in net after deflection from Salubu. And we are Europa League winners. We can add another trophy to the cabinet. Tottenham Hotspur, Europa League winners. And the amount of trophies we need now is going down season by season. Now, I don't know what it is with the FA Cup, but for some reason we can't win it. Don't know why. Hey, we won the Europa League. Come on! It's another trophy added to the cabinet. Smash it in there. And in all fairness, it was not a bad season at all. Competitions... Knocked out in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup, losing to Everton 6-3 on aggregate. The 5-0 defeat in the first leg, that kind of killed us off. But we're not worried about that, it's not part of the challenge. But the 2-0 defeat to Arsenal of all teams in the FA Cup in the fifth round is a heartbreak. We should have done something better there. Final is yet to be played, we literally have a day after Europa League. So it's between Man City and Everton, should be a good final. Obviously, we won the Europa League 3-0. And it looked like there was no team that was going to beat us. Semi-final beating Fiorentina 7-0. Quarters beating Stuttgart 4-1. Round of 16. We beat Hammerby 12-2 eventually. First leg was 3-2. League phase. Top the league phase. 8 wins. 29 goal difference. We were scoring goals for fun. And deserved to win the Europa League. And in the league we finished 4th. 77 points, losing five against both against Man City, one against Arsenal, one against Everton and Wolves, drawing 11 and winning 22. If we turn those draws into wins, we could have been up there, but it's 20 points behind Man City. It's not bad at all. Squad wise and in the goals was Bruno Alvarez with 33 goals in 46 appearances. Jamie Donnelly got 24 in 39 with 5 assists. Then comes Sid Reader, 16 in 32. Kulazewski got 15 goals, had a good season, 8 assists. Ismail Sabari with 11 goals. Our midfielder Ilunga got 10 goals and 12 assists. Not much after that. Assist wise, Pedro Porro with 20 assists. The 31 year old right back with 20 assists. Not bad at all. Uh, Martin Baturinha with 15. Ilunga got 12. Uh, Denise Dogan with 11. Not bad. 
Whereas in Fafana, I've got eight. Kuzevsky got eight. Alvarez got seven. And I tell you what, I think I might have fallen in love with this, this player. Honestly, I think he is going to be world class. Just look at everything there, and it just screams out potential world class player. Not bad for your first season in the Premier League. 16 goals in the league, 33 in all appearances, 46 games. Spurs do have an absolute gem in the side for the future. So, the question is now, I've said that for the last couple of episodes, what do we do now? A little birdie has told me something. Carlo Ancelotti is finally retired next month. On the 13th of June, Carlo Angelotti is finally retiring as a manager of Real Madrid, who evidently have just won La Liga. And I'm pretty sure, more than likely, probably in a Champions League final. No, we lost the semi-final. Who's in the final? Man, uh, Man City Arsenal final. Real Madrid lost 5-0 against Arsenal. It's not good. Not good. As I said, they're going to be looking for a new manager. No one is up for grabs. Been there, it'll be there for 10 years. I think we throw our name into the hat. I think we leave Spurs and we leave the FA Cup again. Because the FA Cup, it's, just gonna, it's gonna be one of those things, FA Cup. We're gonna win it with some random team. And it's gonna be one of the last ones we're gonna get. It's gonna have to be. Our profile, that's another 18 trophies and all. It's not bad, is it? And look at attributes. It's getting better and better. We are a five-star manager. There's no way in hell that Real Madrid will turn us down. Four trophies left to get, two of them in Spain. Plus the UEFA Conference League we've got to win and the FA Cup. So we're gonna have this is gonna be our one last big team, I think. And then we're gonna have to go smaller to get the Owens Conference to get the Conference League trophy. And then look for a Premier League team who I think can challenge for the FA Cup. Whether we go to Man back to Man City, who knows? But I think our time at Tottenham is done. Another one season club. Like we did with FC Bayern, we did with PSG, we're gonna do it again with now with Spurs, we are gonna leave. And hopefully we'll get the Real Madrid job when it comes up. We are resigning as Tottenham manager. Thank you very much. Tottenham actually want me to stay, which is a complete different to what PSG wanted. But yet again, we are now jobless. We just got to hope that Angelo does actually retire and we can go to Real Madrid. If not, Barcelona would be nice. Would be nice. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please hit that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below. I don't know what it is with the FA Cup. We just can't seem to win it. Never mind. Season 19. Until then, take a stay, look after yourself, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Doodles!